Hey, what's up everybody? This is your boy Kenny, and this is How to Get Away with Murder, Season 4, Episode 2, and the name of this episode is I'm Not Her. Man, this was a damn good episode, y'all, so to all the naysayers who's saying that um, How to Get Away with Murder is not popping, this episode proves that, yeah, this show is going somewhere, and I am so here for the ride to see where all of this, how all of this is going to play out, because it's getting crazy. So, um, but before I get started, um, let me, um, extend my love and condolences to all the, all the people that were affected by what happened with, um, um, at the shooting in Las Vegas, as well as everyone that was affected by Hurricane Maria, Hurricane Jose, um, Hurricane Irma, and Hurricane Harvey. If you can give support and relief in any fashion, that you can please do so because you know communities are, are are deeply affected by by these tragic events and we definitely need to be there for our fellow man okay now on with this review this episode opens up uh, Annalise is meeting with um, is meeting with you know Dr. Isaac you know this is the the, um, the court appointed therapist that she has to that she has to um, visit in order for her to, uh, so pretty much she got a, she got back her license, but the conditions is that she has to keep up with her therapy sessions or they'll revoke it. So, so if anything, we see that Dr. Isaac definitely got it's something up with him because the thing about it, we actually see that he's talking to somebody on the phone and then he's like, oh, she's here, I'll call you later. So I'm like. What about um, patient confidentiality? So who the fuck are you talking to in regards to you being, in, in regards of Annalise being your patient? So that was one thing that definitely stuck out for me. So we see that in the session, he's trying to get her to open up about her, about her past, about all of her things, but, you know, Annalise is like, you know, isn't the job of the therapist to actually listen to the patient and actually take from what the patient says, not you trying to control the narrative, but letting the patient control the narrative? And he pretty much says, tells her straight up, like, look, I have a different form of techniques. Um, according to, I mean, what happened with your last therapist? How did that work out for you? Okay, so I'm doing something a little different. I, le I like to get to know more in depth about my patients, and I want my patients to be open and honest with me. Because it even got to the point in this session, because this session was happening throughout the episode. And while she was doing this episode, she was talking about a, a case that she's been, that, that, um, that she, that she, her first case that she has taken on since she got back her license. So since she got back her license, she went back to work. And she takes on the case of Jasmine, and we remember Jasmine from last season. She was um, was um, Annalise's cellmate who kind of had her back and even told her that, you know, um, when I, I, I remember seeing you in court one day, and I was just saying, see, I had this, you know, um, this court prosecutor that was working my case, and I was just, and she said, I was just looking at you, and I was telling myself, why can't this black queen represent me? So we see Jasmine is her first case back um, as a as a as a um, as a litigator and a prosecutor. So I was like, that's real. But Dr. Isaac is kind of over it. Why are you so invested in this woman? Why are you just talking about her? And then he gives her like this questionnaire, like you need to kind of you know go through this. So so she's like, so what is it? You're just trying to psychoanalyze me? You don't ha you don't have enough information about me? And he said that look, I got information that I got from the courts and uh, what I also got from the legal board, what they sent over about you in regards to your case. I know that. But I know that that's only a small piece of the puzzle. You actually know more. I mean, he's, she's saying that there's actually more, and you're not trying to be upfront and telling me about it. You're kind of trying to dance around it. So he pretty much says that, look, I need you to talk to me. And if you ain't going to talk, get out of my office. I'm like, oh, yeah, asshole like shit. But, the, 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 but there is somewhat of a strategy to his method because he's trying to get her to open up about who she is and what, where is she trying to go in the future. But he's taking a different method where he's intervening on her comfort 
and it's like letting her know she needs to be upfront about it. But it's making me question what is his real intentions behind by behind counseling and Annalise? Because we definitely see when it reverts back, you know, you know, months down, months later, that he was around when all of a sudden, um, you know, uh, uh, Laura wakes up and she's asking, "Where's her baby?" We know he's involved in that. So the question is. What is what role is he playing? And who is he working with? And is he working with Annalise or is he against Annalise? We're still trying to figure this out. But he's not taking Annalise's shit, and he just keeps plugging and plugging. But she's saying that a part of this case, she put a lot of her herself into it, so she takes it on. So. Um, I'm definitely going to get to her case, but before that, what's also going on is that we actually see, um, we actually see that, um, that the Keating Four, they're at this, um, this job fair at Milton University. They're, they're pretty much, you know, going to be talking to some of these prestigious law firms. One of them, um, things like, um, 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 Caitlin, Caitlin and Mayer or something like that. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments, but it's the actual firm that works with Laurel's father. And I'm going to get to that. But um, they're there, but, but, you know, it's that firm along with many other top firms who are trying to, you know, recruit possible, you know, students, you know, to come work for their firm. So they're there with their resumes intact. They are dressed. They are ready, you know, um, and they go in there, and then we also see that Simon Drake, that little, you know, sociopathic piece of shit that was always fucking with them, even, and he was also the one that was spreading, you know, those killer posters of Annalise all across the campus. So we know that that asshole got issues, and he's there, and he's, you know, comes in there talking shit like, oh my God, I cannot believe you guys had the nerve to show up. I mean, you guys were, you know, a part of Annalise's cult, and your GPA suffered because of it. And besides, none of these people really don't want to hire you anyway. They only want to talk to you guys because they want to find out about Annalise. And we actually see that all of them get, you know, get interviews. Um, Michaela is killing hers, you know, because, you know, Michaela is very articulate. And, you know, Asher is is pretty much, you know, Ash is nervous, but, you know, he's making his, he's kind of doing his thing. Laurel, Laurel's doing her interviews, but she really doesn't give a shit, so she's just kind of going along with it. But Connor, Connor is, is failing miserably. And it's not just because of him. It's because the two guys that are interviewing him are these, are, they're, they're just scumbags. You know, because they're just being real bullies. They're being real bullying and being very, you know, antagonistic against him. Everything, everything he says, they got a rebuttal for it. Anytime he makes a statement, we ain't asked you about that. We asked you about this. I mean, they were just beating Connor down. But I think it was also due to the fact because, one, Connor's gay, and these guys were possibly, probably, like, frat brothers, and they were jocks. So... Different, they have different ends of the spectrum. So they kind of badger the hell out of them, and then they kind of tell Connor, well, we're not actually going to hire you. Of course you know that. I mean, we're definitely not going to hire your ass. But tell us about Annalise Keating. And then we see every, every one of them of the Keating Four will ask that question about Annalise Keating, and they all give their own answers. But the one that stood out for me was, was, um, was Michaela. Michaela was like, well... Regardless of who Annalise Keating is, that has nothing to do with who I am right now because I'm not her. I'm like, oh, you don't want to be Annalise anymore, huh? Mm-hmm. How quickly the tables have turned. But we, but I think they all feel some kind of way because Annalise fired them. But she's given them, you know, rec letters of recommendation and all of that shit. So we see that going on. And... We actually, and then um, we also see, like, as far as um, Connor and Oliver, um, Connor, um, Connor, um, pretty much, I'm sorry, Oliver got a job working for this IT company, you know, because now that he doesn't have a job working with Annalise anymore, he found a job working for an IT company, he has a uniform and everything, and, you know, Connor kind of jokes with him about it a little bit, but Oliver takes it that, okay, 
I'm working for an IT company, so I'm going to start my own IT company. And then he kind of lets them know about it because after they have the interview, they all get together and everything at um, at Oliver and Connor's place. And Connor lets it be known, and um, Oliver lets me know that he's going to start his own IT business. And with you guys becoming new attorneys, I can possibly do work with you guys. And we actually see that yeah, he's trying to you know make his own way. So I'm like okay. You know, Olive Oil has definitely stepped up because that was like my nickname for Olive Oil because he has runny emotions at times. And for those of you who've been following the show, we know that Oliver, a.k.a. Olive Oil, has those tendencies. But he's kind of moving in the right direction. So we actually see that, con that you know, um, they're pretty much are trying to find out, um, you know, did anybody get callbacks? Uh, Connor got none. Uh... Uh, Michaela got five. Uh, um, Asher, I think, got three. And and pretty much um, um, Laurel lied and said she didn't get any callbacks, but we come to find out she actually did. And how we find out is that because Connor didn't get any callbacks, he went to one of the people that he interviewed who, all, who we actually saw interviewing um, Laurel. And he was like, you know, I, I could be a great candidate and all this stuff. She's like, well, first of all, we are already done, and the thing about it, I'm not going to bend over and give you a slot when I already got eight people who are already in line for the slot that you're trying to come for. And then we see she called Laurel's name. So Connor is like, oh, Laurel lied. She did get a job offer. So we actually see that he goes to Laurel, and we can definitely tell that Laurel still has a lot of you know, tension against Connor because of the whole situation involving Wes. But Connor does feel bad because he wasn't able to save him. And, you know, he's saying that I'm grappling with this, and he's saying that, look, you know, if you take this position, I'll work for you. I'll do whatever you want. You know, I owe you at least that. You know, and, you know, at first, you know, Laurel is very dismissive, but then she tells him that, look, you know, we can't bring Wes back because when he started bringing up West, she's like, don't you ever mention his name. I'm like, Laurel, calm the fuck down. You know, at the end of the day, yeah, he didn't like West, but, <coughs> oh, excuse me, he didn't like West, but he didn't hate West to the point where he did threaten to kill West, too. So, I can see why, why Laurel will feel the way she feels in regards to Connor, because she knew that he didn't like West, and then he was one of the last people to see him die, and he came around everybody and didn't say anything. So Laura was mainly mad at that. But he, but she lets him know that, look, Wes is gone, and it's not your fault, so stop blaming yourself for it. And that, I think, began to loosen up Connor, but Connor really feels emotionally responsible. He, emotionally, he feels responsible for what happened to Wes. That he didn't do what he, he couldn't do what he he didn't do everything he could to save him. So we see that they have that kind of moment. Also, you know, because I'm actually going to talk about the Keating kids, and then I'm going to get into the case that Annalise has with Jasmine, because I'm just going to just talk all about that. Now, after that, after that, we see that um, both. Laurel, that both Michaela and Asher got called back to this firm, Caitlin and Mayer, which is the firm that works with, um, works with Laurel's father. They both are there, you know, and they're they pretty much it's pretty much like another job fair. So they're there talking to other lawyers and executives and associates at the firm, and it's like a big time firm. Like you look into that place, that place you can definitely tell there's money up in that in that motherfucker. But then we also see that Simon is there, Simon Drake, you know, the little asshole. So both Michaela and Ash, well, both Michaela and Ash know he's there, and she's like, well, we're not surprised. You know, we know the type of, you know, malicious ass kisser he is, so it's not surprising that his ass is here. But she says, fuck him, we're here to, we're here to do what we got to do, and we're going to make things happen. So then we see that Michaela starts talking to a group of these of this, um, these lawyers in there, and, they're re and Michaela's working in the room. She's doing her thing. But then we look over to Asha. Asha and Simon are going back and forth over, like, in a corner, and Michaela immediately peeps this and decides to go over there. And, you know, they're taking jabs, but then that motherfucker, Simon, Simon needs his ass whooped. 
Because Simon then begins to go below the belt talking about Asher, saying that, you know, you guys are at the bottom of the barrel, and, you know, you just can't, you know, and, and pretty much he kind of let him know, like, look, you're nothing like your father. You just can't expect to hang and expect everyone to actually come to your, to come to your, you know, your, um, and, and expect to everyone to and expect for everyone to come to you. I was like, you evil bastard, because we know that um, Asher's father was was this was this big time judge, but he pretty much went down and stand on his father committed suicide. So the fact that he threw that up in Asher's face made Asher flip. He broke his glasses. He was about to beat Simon's ass, and I was so here for it. Because Simon really be talking big shit, but he's a little bitch at the end of the day. And the one person that makes him bitch down is Michaela. So Michaela saw this go down, and she sees that Asher was about to lose. She's like, beast mode, baby. Beast mode. What I need you to do, I understand that you're upset. I need you to go in the bathroom and get yourself together and come out composed. I do not want these people to see you, you know, going off. You know, this is not the place for that. So he says, okay. So he goes off because she, cause he went at this. Because, you know, what he said about his father, like his father committed suicide and you're going to be, and you're going to throw it in his face like, well, you can't expect, you know, you can't expect to hang like your dad did when he was, when he was, um, when he was like, you know, working as a judge and all of that shit. So Michaela turns to, um, turns to Simon and she's like, I don't know what happened to you as a child that made you such a sociopath. But let me tell you something. Fuck with him again, and I'm going to cut your balls off and hand and feed them to you. And believe me, baby, I've done worse. And walked off. I'm like, you better get his ass, Michaela. Get sick of his old bitch ass. Trying to turn around. He coming around talking shit. Like, dude. Like, and he's one of the main people that had something against Annalise. So he definitely hated them because they were Annalise's favorite. And now that Annalise is not there, he really talking big shit, but can't back up the shit he's talking. So I was happy that Michaela got his ass together. Got him completely together. Now, pretty much, um, you know, as far as, you know, her having a session with, um, now going back to Annalise and Dr. Isaac, he pretty much knows that she's staying in a hotel. She's saying it's convenient. I got a maid that cleans up after me every day. And I can just come and go whenever I want. But he says, well, what about the, uh, what about the liquor bar or whatever? We see that she saw the liquor and she took all the liquor and threw it away. She's like, look, I'm sober and I'm taking my sobriety seriously. But she talks about her first case. And her first case is with Jasmine, the girl that she was in prison with, you know. And, you know, she wants to help her get out of jail. So immediately when they see each other, she's like, oh, yeah, the queen is back. Yes, look at you, girl. You look all clean. Like, I wish we could take you to the other inmates and they can see how clean you look right now. And she pretty much says that, look, I promise you that I will look into your case and I'm willing to take you on. She's like, well, girl, I can't afford you. She says, this on me. She's like, oh, you one crazy ass bitch, Anna. <laughs> I was just like, I love their, I love their connection. But um, what we see um, within that, um, she decides, you know, that yeah, I'm gonna take on a case and I'm gonna take it on for free because at the end of the day, she has to reestablish herself as being that powerhouse attorney because there's been so much scandal tied to Annalise, Annalise Keating's name. So she definitely wants to take this to take this case on to try to get her back into the full swing of, of being a lawyer. So we see the first hearing um, is 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 um is is in progress. Um, you know the the prosecutor is pretty much saying that she has all these prior convictions. She has a history of prostitution, of drug abuse, and she also solicited an officer. And you know she just has this bad track record. So, um, pretty much, you know, Annalise was actually trying to, you know, at least get her, at least, you know, at least get her a bail hearing, and they were so, oh, no, we're definitely not doing that, you know, and she's been in jail time and time again for years, you know, and that she's been known for prostitution and also drug use. 
So they said based on her prior convictions, there will not be, there will, will be a trial, but don't expect any favors from this point on. And if you really want to, and then they put him, and like pretty much the judge tells her, you need to go um, file, you need to go, you know, um, file a junction, you know, with the court, you know, and then we see Bonnie. And now we see that Bonnie is the assistant DA now. She's working right with um, Denver's old, you know, you know, crooked ass. So, you know, if anything, they walk right past each other, and Alicia's like, look, let's not bring the personal here. And, she, and, and Bonnie's like, of course not. You know, that would be unbecoming. But um, also to let you know, to get that, um, to get that, uh, that form that the judge was talking about, it's on the third floor. And they just pretty much turned her back to her and kept moving. And I'm like, yo, Bonnie is mad as shit. And it's like she is completely turned on Annalise, and she's now working for Denver. And... And then, um, you know, Annalise tries to talk to the prosecutor, like, look, you know, this is a woman who's been in jail for quite some time. Why won't you give her a break? He said that if you know what I knew and if you had access to what I had access to, you would understand why I'm being hard on her. Because she obviously has had time and time again to get things right, but she never did. And, and then we get this video of... Um, of her, um, of, of pretty much of Jasmine, she's drunk as hell, and she's trying to solicit the cop for sex, and he arrests her, and she also had a possession of a firearm, and, you know, and that was, like, the main thing was, like, why are y'all kept hyping on her having a gun? She was a prostitute. She had to protect herself, so why wouldn't she have a gun? But he's saying that it's more than just a gun. And he, she, and she got the video from the prosecutor, so she brings it up to Jasmine, and she's like, Jasmine, why didn't you tell me about this? This does not look good. She's like, look, I tried to switch to the cop because I've done it before, and I've gotten off. Like, hey, you get 10 minutes in the cop car, you get off. You know, I thought it was going to be that, but he got rough with me. You see how rough he was with me? And, and she's like, well, the thing is, I can't, I can't do this if you're, if you're going to hold things from me. You need to tell me everything. So then Jasmine's was like, oh, so you're trying to tell me it's my fault that you're not winning right now? And then, she, and then like, she's saying that, look. And then, like, Annalise is like, look, I'm trying to save your life. And then that set Jasmine off. She said, bitch, save my life? <clears throat> If you wanted to save my life, you should have waited. You should have went back to when I was thirteen, when my father decided to pimp me out, you know, for two bags of coke. And what they did with me was that these, you know, he sent me to a group of his friends. They stood me down, and they all took turns with me. It's called wolf packing. So because of all of that trauma and all of that, it immediately brainwashes you to, to believe. It conditions you to to live that life of prostitution. And you take drugs time and time again to feel the numbness of all of this abuse that's happening to you. And this has been happening since I was 13. You know, I would, and it's been a cycle. I would trick, do drugs, get locked up, just to go back out on the street and do the same shit again. So you talk about save my life? Bitch, please. And she left. But then, you know, she does some research on, um, she actually does some research, um, on, um, on Jasmine's history, and we're seeing her being arrested at age 18, 21, 58, you know, 43, you know, but then, but she had no records of her being molested at a, of her being arrested when she was a minor, and she asked, were you ever, she said that the lowest age I got of you being arrested is 18. Were you ever arrested for prostitution earlier than that? She said, yeah. I was like around 13 at the time, but, you know, the judge said, you know, he was going to let me, he was going to let me walk, so they just kind of sealed it, and I just went on about my business. And she was like, oh, they sealed it. I got to get my hands on that, because that's the way, that's, that's the way I'm going to get your ass out of here. <laughs> so, we see that Annalise goes to the desk to try to get this sealed, um, this sealed case, 
the lady is giving her a bunch of pulls and push back and is giving Annalise a hard time. Then Nate comes in, and we actually see that Nate ran into Bonnie, so Nate knows Bonnie's working for, she's now the assistant DA, but he's, you know, she came to him to ask him for some help or whatever, and he's like, look, I know you up in here working for Annalise and all of this shit, and I'm not here for y'all bullshit. And Nate gets on my fucking nerves, because Nate, you got a promotion as, as, a, as a head investigator, and you got that because Annalise negotiated that for you in her, in her dealings with Denver. And it's just like, Nate's just like, I don't want to be involved in her mess or involved in her bullshit. So if you come in here to try some shit, you're not going to use me. So Bonnie was just like, whatever, motherfucker, and kind of just blew Nate off. So Nate finally sees Annalise at this, at this desk, and he, and he put him himself, old oh, girl, look, you, what you're dealing with right now is probably not even an ounce to what everything Annalise has been through. So please give her a break and help her out. So she's like, okay, fine, but you owe me some edamins. So then her and Nate starts talking, and Nate lets her know, oh, yeah, I know Bonnie is working here. I don't know what you got up your sleeve, but I'm just, I've just made, you know, I just made an investigator, and I'm not going to let you ruin nothing for me. And she said, I fired Bonnie. So she's not in here working for me. She's working here on her own volition. I didn't even know she was working for Denver until this morning. So he was like, so pretty much, um, so pretty much, uh, you know, Nate was like, well, you better not be lying. And she's like, well, I'm not. <laughs> like, what the fuck do you, more do you want from me, Nate? So I was like, okay, that was cool. But then we see that she tried to get Bonnie to help her with getting this information. She's like, look, she was a child. And, you know, could you please help me to get this sealed, this sealed um, case? And she literally shuts the door in Annalise's face. So Bonnie is really being a bitch. But then Bonnie actually talks to, um, talks to um, Frank. So her and Frank are still, you know, kicking in with each other. And he's asking about Annalise. And she's saying, oh, yeah, she wanted me to get this closed case on this file on this girl, Jasmine, this girl that she was in jail with, but I don't give a fuck about Annalise. I can drink now. I can do me. I ain't got to worry about her and her bullshit no more. I'm over it. So we see that Frank finds out what Annalise is, and he has that file. And because, you know, you know um, she wasn't going to get it from the front desk lady because the file was sealed, so she couldn't... She couldn't um, get that file for her, because, and then on top of it, um, Bonnie wouldn't help her, because Bonnie could have pulled it, but Frank got the damn file, and went to Annalise's door, and he's banging on the door, whatever, and she opens the door, and he's, and he's saying that, look, I got the file for, for Jasmine's case, and I think it's going to help you out, she tries to shut the door on Frank, but Frank budges it, and lets her know that, look, whether you want me, or whether you don't want me, I will always have your back, Annalise. Gives her the file, and he leaves. So this file is pretty much the smoking gun that actually helps her to win Jasmine's case. Because we, cause pretty much what ends up happening was that um, Jasmine had been arrested at the age of 13, and instead of her, and on top of it, she's an underage girl being arrested for prostitution. And instead of, you know, the courts actually treating her as a minor, they just pretty much just sealed the case and just put her back out there in the streets. But then they say around the same time, there were other girls who were arrested for the same thing. They were sent to a rehab institution. And she said the difference, and this is back in 1968, and she said the difference, because she actually brought back the old you know, prosecutor that worked that case, you know, she brought, she put his ass on the stand and read this ass for filth. Because for one, she got a sealed case, but that sealed case changed everything. And even through off the, um, the prosecutor, you know, but she said that, look, you know, since he is um, a member of the court, we can, he can ask, we can actually discuss a sealed case. Because if he wasn't, they, she wouldn't have been able to use the case at all. So it was a smoking gun. So she pretty much says that, you know, those girls that you sent to the rehab facilities, the only difference between Jasmine and those girls is that those girls were white and Jasmine was black. You could have saved this girl's life. She was a prostitute. She was being trafficked. She was pretty much doing trafficking as a sex slave. 
This was a child, and you pretty much booked her on prostitution, and then not only that, you didn't even actually get her the actual help she needed. You pretty much put her back out there in the street with the wolves. So all of her arrests, all of her convictions, and all of this could have been prevented if she would have been given a proper care as a child, but yet you threw her back there to the wolves, and now she has lived this life of drug addiction, of prostitution, of soliciting police officers, and all of this shit. All of this shit could have been prevented if you would have done your job and would have protected her as a child, but you did not, and you pretty much left her in a world full of wolves. So, with that... The case pretty and and like they and even the judge is trying to stop Annalise. Annalise read that shit for filth and I was like, Yes! Annalise is back, I damn it. I was so here for that. So then the the, the the judge makes his ruling. He tells Annalise, Okay, you really did overstep your bounds in court today. But Jasmine, this court offers you an apology. Because as a child, you should have been protected. You should have been gotten proper, you know, you should have been, you should have been given therapy, even um, assistance to get, you, to get you to live a better life. And yet, you are thrown back to, to a life of prostitution and desperation. And this whole rap sheet, you know, was created based off of our negligence as being members of the court. So, not only am I going to grant you your, your freedom, but I'm going to try to help you you know, I can't take away your convictions, but I can make it where you can get public assistance and you can get, you know, um, food stamps and all of those things, <clears throat> you know, to help you get on your feet until you're able to, and she says, as long as you don't have any more, you know, um, long as I don't, and he says, as long as I don't ever see you in my court again, you have the full support of, you know, of this court. And I will see to it that we will um, that we will pretty much rehabilitate you in the best way we can. So I'm like, boom! Her first case back, she lands a home run. So pretty much she's um, so pretty much we had that go on. She's talking about it with um, with Dr. Isaac, and she's saying that you know I see why you really talk why you really want to talk about this case because you saw yourself in this girl. She says, say, yeah, I've been molested and everything, you know, but hey, she's a drug addict, you know, she's probably going to be back, you know, in three months, she's probably going to be back in jail again, you know, I wouldn't be surprised and probably going to ask me to help her to get off or some shit, she's probably going to relapse, but then the, but then the, um, Dr. I just like, well, I was a former heroin addict, and yeah, it took a lot of hard work, but you're talking to a person who used to be an addict, but I made it. So, who's to say that Jasmine won't make it? And immediately, as Annalise called that shit out, she says, you know what? I had a psychiatrist who did the same shit to try to get me to open up. He starts sharing some personal stuff. And because he did that, that made me come out more and share some more stuff. But the trick of, trick of it is that me and that professor, and the, me and that psychiatrist ended up getting close. And... Next thing you know, he was my damn husband. Because we remember, you know, Sam Keating was a psychiatrist. So she kind of let it be known that, yeah, I went through this shit before. What you tell him, talking about your personal life. My ex-husband did the same. My damn, my damn deceased husband did the same shit. And that's how he got my ass. So she's like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not for the bullshit. But then... We see if it applies. It it, um, if that it, um, it fast forwards two months later, you know, um, we see that um, that that um, Laura is panicking in the hospital, and then we see Dr. Isaac call Annalise. He's like, "Where the hell are you? Like, call me back now." And we go to we actually um, later on, like two months down the line, we see Bonnie is still working for Denver. She's on the scene at Annalise's place. Annalise is missing. Nobody knows where she is. But then we see there is a lot of blood inside of the elevator door. The question is, whose blood is it and what happened? So that's where it ended. Yo, I'm so here for How to Get Away with Murder, y'all. This season is going to be lit. And I'm really seeing that, yeah, now she got everybody against her, but now she's back into the swing of being a lawyer. We're going to see how she's going to rebuild her reputation. And also figure out what the hell happened to Laura. What what happened to her? 
and who was behind that. But um, we also saw, you know, uh, just uh, something I missed. Um, we see that uh, Michaela and Laurel are talking, and Laurel, um, she pretty much lets. She pretty much lets, um, Michaela lets Laurel know that her and Asha have been, um, have been accepted by that firm, Caitlin and Mayer. And she says, oh, great, you know, you need to take that job. And Michaela's like, well, why? I mean, I mean, they're the best. I mean, there are other options, you know, but, you know, why that one? And then Laurel says, that's the firm that, um, works with my father. And I need you and Asha in there on the inside because... My father killed Wes. I'm like, ooh, shit. We're going to see how this going to play out. But that's what I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. But uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, um, I started a GoFundMe. Uh, I started a GoFundMe. You can check out my link in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I will be back with the next episode of How to Get Away with Murder. Yo, I enjoyed this, and I am so here for the ride. So until next time, everybody, take care.